Okay, good morning and uh, welcome once again to this course on uh, Believer's Authority. We will pray and begin this morning. I would like to request uh, one of us to please lead with prayer. Prince. Jesus, uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for bringing us all together, Lord, uh, to listen to your word, uh, to study and uh, to learn, Lord, Father. As we are going to start our classes, Lord, Father, give us your spirit, oh, Lord, Father. Give us your wisdom. Give us uh, your understanding, oh, Lord, Father, so that uh, we will learn what you are teaching and we will uh, use... Uh, we will exercise uh, all the things that you are teaching and we'll keep it into practice. Jesus, we surrender our minds, we surrender our will into your hands. Jesus, come and have your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Prince. So we have now got some understanding regarding, um, you know, Satan and demons and their nature uh, for us to later on, you know, talk about deliverance. But as I've been pointing out each time, the most important subject as far as believers' authority is concerned is to understand the work of the cross. Okay, So what Jesus has done for us, because in that uh, is the uh, release of that authority upon our lives. Okay? Because Jesus went to the cross, we know that the authority which he wanted to give us, he was able to give us you know, fully based on that finished work, based on salvation. Even before the cross, did he give authority? He did, isn't it? He gave authority to his disciples. He gave authority to those 70 uh, workers who saw the power of God manifest. But the fullness of that authority came into being after the Lord Jesus uh, died on the cross. And that is why when we read about the Great Commission, we see he said, all authority, heaven and earth is mine and I give it to you. So now we are walking in that authority. So what exactly has the Lord Jesus done for us through his redemptive work? The point is that we have to understand that Satan is defeated. Okay, Satan is defeated. So we are going to look at few scriptures that will make it very clear that Satan is defeated. So the first one is Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I will need the help of uh, a few people to read at least five passages, five, six passages today. So uh, please hold on to your mic. Genesis 3 and verse 15. <clears throat> and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Mm. So way back in the book of Genesis, uh, there is this promise which God made that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. This is symbolic. You, know, you have many pictures of what God is actually going to do later on. And we know that the seed of the woman there is actually talking about the Lord Jesus who will come. And the serpent is the picture of Satan. Okay, So in the garden, while God was sending them out of the garden, he already gave that word of victory and said that there will come a time when the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent and that is talking about Jesus who will destroy the devil and we know that once Jesus died on the cross that's exactly what he did he already crushed Satan so though we've talked so much about the you know abilities the methods of working of Satan and all that Satan is crushed that is also something we have to understand. He's already defeated. He is a crushed enemy. Now, moving on. John chapter 12, verses 31 to 33. Now is the judgment of this world. 
now the ruler of this world will be cast out and i if i am lifted up from the earth will would die uh, will draw all pupils to myself this is this he said signifying why what did of would die the pupil answered him we have heard from the law that the christ remains forever and how can you say the son of man must be lifted up who is this son of man okay so again here we are noticing that satan he has been expelled has he been expelled from the earth when we say expelled it's about removing him from that place of influence which is the world is he removed from this world right now what do you think okay i love to ask the online students because on campus students are not giving me an answer so is satan expelled has he been removed from the earth no you know that's that's the answer so where is he expelled from from heaven but once jesus came and he did the redemptive work we are saying that satan is expelled so when we say that he is expelled we are simply meaning that his position of authority which he had on the earth he is present now that is a uh, you know like a that that's a uh, that's a truth also he is around and he is still doing his works but his authority so you can think of it like this when we say satan is expelled his throne of authority he's been thrown out of there so he no longer has that position of authority that's how we understand so think of a, an enemy okay think of uh, somebody who is opposing you that enemy is already crushed that enemy does not have authority okay so no wonder jesus said right he said all authority on heaven and earth is mine and i give it to you how could he say that because now the authority which satan had has been taken away from him so we are facing an enemy who does not have authority what else about satan and the kind of enemy that he is john chapter 16 verses 8 through 11 okay no need to uh, read that passage it's a longish passage but basically there we see that satan has been condemned okay these are all terms uh, which you could understand if some of us are not very uh, you know uh, good with english no problem you can go look it up uh, so that you you get the words in your own language and just try to understand what these words mean condemned is when we declare the defeat of somebody you know we say that oh in those wrestling matches uh, usually they would autom <coughs> when they raise the hand of the winner what does it mean that the other person is the loser so it's a declaration that somebody is the loser so satan now has been condemned that's what the bible says okay he's already condemned satan has been disarmed we will read this passage colossians 2 verses 14 through 15 colossians 2 14 15 that was against us which was contrary to us and he has taken it out of the way having nailed it to the cross 15 having uh, assumed for uh, offense the enemies and powers he made a public spectacle of them from the beginning okay so there we read isn't it that uh, whatever accusations were against us jesus has dealt with it he has nailed it to the cross and we see that he has disarmed principalities disarmed simply means that we take away every weapon we take away every ability of our enemy so uh, even today when uh, soldiers are captured once they are captured do they have their weapons no 
all the weapons, everything is taken away from them. So that is disarmed. What did Jesus do when he went on the cross for us? We are told that he disarmed principalities. So does Satan and demonic powers have certain abilities right now with which they use their tactics against the believers? They do. However, the reality is that Jesus has removed you know, uh, any, any form of a weapon which can harm or hurt us. He's removed it from their hands. But he, they still continue to do all these tactics. Okay, but we must understand that Satan and demons, they are actually disarmed. And there is another part there in that passage. It says, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing on it. So public spectacle means, uh, you know, if you, if you can recall in history, there are times when kings would go into battle and when one king wins, he will come back proclaiming his victory. And how would he do that? He'll bring all the treasures, you know, he'll bring the cattle, he'll bring everything that he got from that land and parade it. So then the people know that, oh, this king is victorious. And not just that, sometimes what they would also do is they would bring the enemy. You know, they would bring the enemy uh, uh, and uh, parade them, maybe make them look bad or I don't know how they would dress them in a, in a certain way to just say, oh, look at the enemy. These were the people who came to fight us, but we won over them. So that is a public spectacle. The spectacle is when, when you put it on display that I am now victorious. So what we are told is that Jesus has disarmed authorities, these demonic authorities. And when he went on the cross, he made a public spectacle that these are all condemned. I am victorious. He made a public spectacle of the demonic powers. And that is what the Bible says. So whenever we find repetition, right? What, what are we, uh, what is our, uh, uh, you know, takeaway from that? God is making a point, a very strong point, which we must believe. So, so many things are being told. Satan is crushed. Satan has been expelled from, from his place of authority. Satan is condemned. Satan is disarmed. So repeatedly we are being told that Jesus is victorious and Satan is a loser. You have that song, right? Win a man, win a man. I don't know how many of you know that song. Uh, Satan is the loser man, loser being, and Jesus is the winner man. So basically what we are understanding here is that the Bible is telling us again and again, Jesus is the winner man. Jesus is victorious. Okay, never lose focus on that. Jesus is already one. See, when we get this in our minds, whenever we face any work of the devil, whether it is sin in our own lives, sometimes we may struggle, okay, temptation uh, or whatever, discouragement, or it could be sickness or it could be some oppression of the devil. One thing we know, yes, I'm facing this, but Jesus is the winner man. Jesus is victorious. So devil, you have no authority. You have no right. Okay, you have no place in my life. I ask you to leave in the name of Jesus. We'll come to that place of understanding when we recognize what Jesus has done. So, you know, we understand that Jesus has made a public spectacle of the enemy who is Satan. Two more things. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. We will read this also. So, uh, who, anyone? Hebrews. 2, 14 and 15. <laughs> in, in so much then as the children have partaken of flesh and uh, blood, he himself likewise said in the same that pro death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Okay, so through the work of the cross, what has Jesus done? Jesus has destroyed the person who had, you know, who had the uh, authority to afflict us with death. Who is that? Satan. 
so jesus has destroyed the devil that's what the writer of the hebrews is saying why did jesus come jesus came to defeat and destroy the devil that was part of his agenda that was part of his uh, you know main work his main assignment sometimes what we think oh jesus came to give us some good teachings jesus came to uh, you know encourage us jesus came to do all the but overall why did jesus come he came to destroy the devil so that he can be the author of our salvation and he has done it that's the point he has done it so satan is destroyed okay because the work of the cross is finished he said it is finished what does it mean the main goal i came here for this satan is destroyed now that i have taken the sin of the world and paid the price for it okay uh, and and so you know for this we study the work of jesus what did he actually do the work of salvation so when we understand that we also understand that because of what jesus has done satan is now destroyed okay um, and finally uh, matthew 28 verse 18 which i stated earlier yeah chira can read matthew 28 and verse 18 matthew 28 and 20 teaching them to observe all things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age okay uh did you read 19 or 18 i 18 18 20 sorry 28 20 ha 28 18 18 yeah. okay 28 18 then jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth so all authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth so if we go back to our first class which we had what did we say we said that in genesis 1 26 god gave man the authority god gave man the dominion but later what happened if you go and look at luke 4 satan is telling jesus i will give you i will give you the kingdoms of the world so that authority has now been handed over to satan but now in matthew 28 what is jesus saying it has been given to me meaning when jesus died on the cross you know that whole shifting and transfer of authority went from man mankind adam and eve to satan now what has happened it went from satan to back to jesus all authority has been given to me and i give it to you okay so jesus has proved that satan is powerless okay, powerless so overall the picture we have right now is that jesus is victorious jesus has defeated the devil the devil is or satan is we could say he is crushed he is destroyed he is expelled he is condemned he is disarmed and he is powerless okay so having said this i want to ask you do you have any questions satan is defeated okay so do you have any questions <laughs> so many questions okay let's get started yeah and then what question obviously for everyone there will be a questions if satan is defeated ha huh. why he is doing all this how can he do yeah. it yeah so if satan is defeated very good question that's why i i knew that you know you would have this doubt if he is so defeated okay repeatedly with different words i told you he is defeated then why is he causing so much havoc yeah shan has something to say yeah huh <laughs> okay so shan is saying if satan is defeated now and he is like this how do you think he was before uh, he was defeated okay yeah that's something to think about 
Okay. So, uh, all right. I'll just try to give some points, you know, to address what Anand said. So Satan is defeated. Then why is or how is he able to do so many things against people? One is Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Okay. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, where, uh, uh, you know, the uh, scripture says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the things we don't understand, we don't benefit from it. So as believers, point number one, as believers, when we don't know that Jesus' redemptive work also means the defeat of the devil and that Satan is now powerless, when we don't understand it, how do we live as believers? Yeah, so he will try to show his power on us because we don't have understanding. Okay, we, we will live like, oh, he's so powerful. Satan is doing this. Satan is doing that. Satan is doing all these things because we don't have knowledge. And many believers live like that. That's the problem. And Satan is able to get away with it. One is lack of knowledge. Second thing is that when an enemy is defeated, we usually use the term like guerrilla tactics. Okay, so what does that mean? It basically means that an enemy is not able to do anything directly because he's already defeated. But what do they do? They try to work indirectly. For example, you know, if, if there is no authority in a land for a certain person to come and uh, create trouble, what will they do? They will find some people in the community. They'll start to spread some wrong news. They'll win over people. They'll try to create some mob violence. So you understand? They are still trying to affect, but not directly. And also, what they do is, they will try to increase their effort. Because there is a very short time now left. Now they are already declared as condemned. But they'll have to be imprisoned. They'll have to you know, uh, bear the consequences of uh, um, this defeat. But before that, let's create maximum destruction. If I'm going to die, I'll create destruction first. Okay, so that is what is we we understand that as like guerrilla tactics. He has very little time. Satan knows that. So in that time, he wants to make sure that he brings destruction. So people say, right? Then why is the devil working so much? Obviously, he already knows he is defeated. He already knows he doesn't have much time. He wants to do as much as possible. So no wonder Peter writes. He's like a roaring lion. No, seeking for those whom he may devour. So he won't sit quietly. He will make it difficult for people. That's how he works. And that is why, as Anand said, why is there so much activity happening? Because of this. Okay. So just two uh, answers there. Yes, Sean, you want to? Yeah, sure. So um, Sean is saying that uh, as uh, in the case of Israel, God did, God did many mighty works, but though that generation did not pass it on to the next generation. So for the lack of knowledge, um, the next generation missed out. Know, lost uh, lost things so in the same way today those of us who know right we are not passing on this information this knowledge that we are victorious and that's the reason satan is able to uh, continue playing havoc so uh, unsatisfied okay good yeah nice nice to know that uh, you know your answer you received it so this is how we we look at the dynamics between God and Satan. 
Satan is already defeated. And I've said many other things to us earlier, okay, that Satan is actually not a comparison to God because God is the creator. Satan is a created being. God is infinite. Satan is limited. He's just a, 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 an individual entity, like you know, you and me with a personality. He's limited. God knows everything. People ask questions, oh, God, does Satan know everything? No, he doesn't know everything. He can only use the information which is given to him, which is available, because he's like you and me. He only knows what is available. Okay, so these are all the differences. So let's not try to even compare God and Satan. There is no comparison. Okay, uh, and now all the more scripture is saying disarmed. You know, if you have a lion uh, who is weak and old and has no teeth, has no claws, you know, uh, has no power, has no strength, would you be afraid of that lion? Because it can't do anything to you, hopefully, right? <laughs> so I'm just an example. I don't know if it's a weird example, but the point I'm making is it's something like that. Because right now, he can scare us, but without our permission, he actually cannot, you know, defeat us in any way. But if we give in to his uh, tactics, yes. You know, like Jesus said, he has nothing in me. So if anything in me agrees with him, he can play the fool. But if no, then he can't do anything. That is how it is. Okay, that is the reality that all of us as believers must understand. Yes, sir, Sean. Yeah. Okay, so Sean is saying that uh, uh, Satan keeps the fear of the unknown. Uh, he uses the fear of the unknown to keep people away. Okay, keep people away from God. So when, again, something like knowledge, right? When you don't understand, when you don't see it, then uh, yeah, it doesn't benefit you. So that's how he's playing his game. Uh, but for us, as uh, children of God, we must be established in this fact that, hey, Satan is defeated. I don't have to be scared of him. Okay, so let's read two more scriptures and then I'll explain some more. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And then uh, also please be ready with Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 6. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Uh, sorry? Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Uh, verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm. So this is before the cross. Okay. So what is Jesus saying? I give you the, can you read it again, Anand? Yeah. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, so if Jesus is saying that, can we believe it? I give you the authority to trample, over, trample upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you. He's saying this even before the cross. He's giving them the authority. Okay, and what is he saying? He's saying serpents and scorpions representing the demonic powers. You are above them. I'm giving you mastery over these powers of darkness. Nothing by any means shall harm you. So, as a soldier, when you go into battle, do you feel safe? Of course. Because Jesus is saying, you are protected. Okay? Not only can you destroy them, but they cannot even harm you. So, we are already victorious in this battle. If Satan is doing something, we can crush that. You know, we can enforce the victory. Because we are coming with authority. We are coming with victory. And that's what Jesus told his 
disciples and that is a word which stands even today for all of us um, can we read the next one there uh, anand but god yes. but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we are dead in trespasses made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved okay so uh, you're reading verses 4 through 6 sorry 6 and raised us up together and made us sit together hmm. in the heavenly places in christ jesus yeah so in christ jesus something has been done which is a reality for us today what is that we have been seated with christ in the heavenly places uh what does it mean it means right now you're all sitting on your chairs you know, people at home they're sitting on their chairs okay but here is the spiritual truth while you're sitting on your chair here or i'm standing here i am <coughs> i am also seated with christ in the heavenly places okay so where am i in spirit in the spiritual reality in the heavenly places seated with christ so when christ is seated he seated next to the father is that a place of authority yes it's the highest place of authority he seated the right hand of the father he has already destroyed the works of the devil so he's sitting in his place of authority and what does the bible say you and me we are seated with christ in the heavenly places so that is the place of authority where we are seated so when we command the devil and we say stop devil you can't do this or this is not right i don't allow you to do this i command you you know to take your hands off i bind you i cast you out where am i speaking all this authority from spiritually i am now seated with christ in the heavenly places that's the highest place of authority so i have the authority satan cannot ask me how can you say that to me he can never ask me that because jesus has given me that authority okay so this is the reality jesus already said you will trample on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you and also we are seated with christ in the heavenly places so given all these things we can now walk in mastery over the devil jesus is victorious that we understood we are also victorious okay now then comes the next question then why are believers defeated you know we ask that then why are so many believers experiencing same answers lack of knowledge lack of using the authority remember when we talked about authority we were understanding it we said sometimes authority can go unused so if it is unused then can the devil play havoc can he do you know can he trouble the believer he can because believer is not stopping okay so these are the truths that we must be established in jesus has defeated satan we now have mastery over the devil and we have to enforce it how do we enforce it you see jesus said that i give you the keys of the kingdom you do something whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven so i can pray like that instead of keeping quiet i watch everything that the devil is doing and i keep quiet no enforce are we seeing the devil do something wrong i bind the spirit of whatever you know i bind confusion i bind sickness we can do that use the authority don't keep it on the shelf you know and take a nice nap then what will the devil do he'll play havoc on me use the authority so jesus said you know i in the great commission he already said i've given it to you all authority on heaven and earth is mine and i now give it to you so we need to operate from this place of boldness of christ's triumph and victory and also that we have mastery over the devil okay uh, but i remember once i think it was the 
probably one of was it the first time maybe so had gone to uh, the house of some students we used to have a lot of students coming to our location uh, where i minister so uh, for house visit they told uh, there's a new student you please come you visit us so i'd gone there and i just uh, you know i sat with them talked with them everything and then they said okay pastor pray okay and just a normal day okay there are some three students over here and i started praying and one of the girls started manifesting never imagine this is going to happen okay so she starts acting like a snake on the floor so she's just like writhing on the floor and moving from here to there and coming back and he's singing and all that so i understood oh man this is a demon and it's manifesting now so i need to cast it out okay so i went ahead everything i know whatever i you know we are teaching you all i already have the authority so what is the point to we shouldn't be scared because my understanding is based on what i taught you right now i have the authority jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom okay uh, you can trample on serpents and scorpions nothing by any means shall harm you and uh, i am seated with christ in the heavenly places so i started praying and i started casting it out i said okay i command you in the name of jesus and after a while you know she she was uh, better she was better uh, but then i recognized that there were more demons to deal with that was not good enough and so you know we um, like i came here and i informed our team here and then we fixed another day where we said okay can you guys bring her we'll take about half a day or something just pray for her and you know we'll all minister to her so uh, that's how it happened but i remember right after this was done i was sharing it with uh, another uh, pastor friend of mine and they said uh be careful sister now that you have cast out a demon uh the uh, demons will try to attack you okay i had never thought like that i had never thought that oh are you saying that it, there's going to be a backlash because i've cast out a demon and they said yeah it always happens so from that moment i started reading into everything in my life like oh oh this is happening maybe it's uh, satan is attacking me that is happening satan is attacking me but you know i went and asked uh, i clarified this doubt in the bible is it like that that if i uh, go against the devil then the devil will go against me well through scriptures obviously you know uh, pastor told me there's nothing like that because what does luke 10:19 say nothing by any means shall harm you but if i believe that i am going to be harmed then can he harm he can because i am believing i am giving the place for fear and doubt and different things so uh you know from that point on i recognize that it's a false it's unscriptural to think that the devil is so powerful and then he is going to attack me back if i do anything against his kingdom right so these are all baseless ways of thinking and we must recognize that you know we are protected psalm 91 <coughs> what does it say he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty okay so god protects us god protects us there's one more scripture 1 john 5 18 which says that you know when we when we walk in righteousness okay the enemy cannot touch us so luke 1019 says the enemy cannot harm us the other one says the enemy cannot touch us so this is the kind of confidence we must have okay um i'll go to the question now uh you mm. know, when we when we see it very practically mm. i mean yeah uh, saturn saturn don't have power on us but uh, when we see in some uh, men particular situations and all uh it 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 gets on us and it takes the it takes the authority on us until we speak and until we speak the word of god on it or uh, we we may after, until we may speak authoritatively and uh, he'll do i mean what ha- what he can do right practically also when we see i mean there are so many incidents i have heard what about that 
those okay so you're saying there are many incidents where though we are saying he's powerless he's showing his power like what in demon possession and ah uh -huh. hmm yeah so see that show or display of power he will he will try to do that no not that he's really powerful it's his way of uh, scaring us if we get scared we'll think okay let me stop let me not go after this demon but frankly if you look at scriptures none of the scriptures stop us right every believer has authority any believer can go and cast out that demon he will display his power i don't deny that uh, but ultimately we have the authority so we should not give up okay see when we go uh, to practical steps of deliverance there we will study sometimes demons are stubborn they are very stubborn okay sometimes what happens is we saw that one demon comes out when jesus cast them out goes into arid places brings back seven other demons okay who are more powerful than this demon so what are they doing they know how to make it worse they know how to make the situation of a person worse if they don't clean up like if the house is set right then they can't do anything but if it is still having an open door they can make it worse okay so these are all their tactics they know how to do all these things but as a believer with the understanding that i have uh, you know what i must do is i should recognize yeah sometimes they are stubborn you know if you go into practical deliverances you would see that some deliverances happen in a minute uh, i remember pastor sharing this he was preaching apparently in one uh, conference and the pastor he told he shared this yeah that one two three thing okay so pastor's conference and then the demon manifest and he just cast out immediately immediately it happened but sometimes you know it will take a few hours i have also seen that i i have experienced it we were trying to cast out demon of one from one lady so many of us a whole team we took her uh, this was also one uh, one of those youth conferences in delhi so we took her to the room behind uh, over there and for few hours we are commanding we are casting she is moving two three people are holding her because she's so powerful you know she's screaming it took some time some few hours i've heard people say that casting out some demons it's taken them 3 days so the point is that doesn't prove that satan is powerful because he is stubborn it doesn't mean he is powerful he is not giving up we should not give up it's as simple as that yeah yes every sunday <laughs> okay okay uh, okay we'll give the mic to you vimal because online students will miss out on what you're sharing oh yeah i mean north india huh. uh, i saw in every sunday like demons are possessing and huh. uh, and pastor is praying and like that okay that type but here i didn't see like you didn't see type. manifestation yes. okay Yeah so uh see manifestation of demons it happens in the presence of god sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't happen okay now we don't know why you know uh, you're not seeing it here maybe you should tell pastor about it uh, but uh, that's okay you know that's not a, a benchmark of how spiritual a meeting is sometimes they manifest sometimes they don't okay but that doesn't mean there are no demons also and later we will study see when we talk about demons being cast out okay uh, deliverance is not just okay in the name of jesus come out deliverance is also when strongholds are broken for example we are studying the word of god isn't it so when we are studying the word of god what is happening our mind is being renewed now let's say for example a person has demons of lust they are demonized in their mind with demons of lust 
okay but as they are studying the word of god can we expect the mind to change be renewed so we may not see them screaming jumping yelling no but after just by coming to church every sunday can that person be set free yes without the screaming without the manifestation so manifestation is not you know like oh only then we are dealing with demons and deliverance is happening no yes sometimes there is manifestation but even without manifestation lot of deliverances happen i have heard like personal life transformation testimonies where people say sunday after sunday i came i heard the word of god these habits left me these addictions broke in my life you know so we should not go only by manifestation that's my point uh, vimal did i answer what you're asking ha huh. okay ma'am uh, hmm. the kingdom the devil is fully uh, fully uh, fully defeated na ha huh. so yes. at that time uh, when jesus is uh, telling uh, jesus is scolding his disciples and he's telling uh, for some uh, some demons mm. like uh, you have to fasting, fasting and prayer pray, huh? so for uh, there is a demons like we have to fasting and prayer mm. okay okay so uh, i think that passage is in matthew 17 where the disciples are not able to cast out a demon then jesus says you must fast and pray it's not that for some demons you have to fast and pray because in the experience of jesus what do we see careful uh, what do we see in the experience of jesus now legion he comes to that um, uh, get get us serene right that place so he comes there and uh, he sees legion he doesn't tell legion a hey, please give me 3 days i'll come back okay you, you seem very like uh, 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 who are you then answer question is singular who are you answer is we are many then jesus didn't say are i have to fast 10 days i will come back to you please give me 10 days time because i need to fast and pray it's not like that uh, vimal see we can cast out a demon even without fasting and prayer but how does fasting and prayer help it builds my faith you understood so what is the problem faith is the problem now let us take for example somebody doesn't understand that satan is defeated satan is powerless all that but they are fasting 20 days do you think they'll be able to cast out demon because they don't have faith only that god is more powerful than satan so it's not fasting and prayer independent of you know faith in the word of god doesn't help faith yeah it builds our faith that's what it does okay so that is the understanding so sometimes we may feel okay i have to cast out this demon and uh, i need to build up my faith if there is time it is good to fast and pray you understood it's like that but uh, it's not like some demons it says oh ye wala to fasting prayer wala demon hai it's not like that okay yes uh, any question you had <laughs> okay we'll take the questions it's yeah. already 11:51 uh, so what i'll do is i'll continue with the questions if there's anyone on the online um, batch here who wants to leave please feel free so absolutely fine yeah let's go ahead just one question ma'am yeah uh, ma'am um, yes when you having a, when you having this prayer meetings and all that and you mm. have the manifestation right my question is how can you have manifestation in uh, when your time in the time of prayer when you have when the god's presence is there in that yeah. prayer how can something like that happen in the first place my question if okay. god's presence is there satan should be somewhere 100 meters away right okay okay that is sean's question so uh, sean from today i'll start asking you questions okay yes, so my question is when jesus came and again talking about that man legion in the presence of jesus how can how can he talk or oh, he should run away no 
but at that moment of time jesus was man right he wasn't i mean in that moment jesus was man he wasn't uh, he didn't have his presence he didn't have his power no. that time. correct but he was still fully man and fully god okay so anyway i'm just yeah. helping uh, you know together we are trying to understand that satan is uncomfortable in the presence of god okay and sometimes that shows and that is through the manifestations uh, so yeah I, i think that's that's quite uh, normal yeah right. okay yes uh, prince i have two questions ha huh. first one is uh, from the scripture that we read uh, luke chapter 10 verse 19 we have seen uh, where god says like i will give you authority over snakes yes uh and uh, immediately in the next verse uh, in verse 20 it was there like uh, however do not rejoice that the spirit submit to you mm. but uh, rejoice that your name It's is written. Uh, written in heaven so yeah. what like uh, what he mean god is uh, jesus is trying to tell like submit spirit submit to you yeah so in that incident they go with authority and they are successful okay they come back and they tell uh, jesus what is the testimony we saw uh, satan fall like lightning they say so the meaning is the defeat of the devil it's like that he fell so that powerful the ministry was we saw the kingdom of god ruling and reigning and the kingdom of darkness defeated okay then jesus tells them don't rejoice that the spirits are subject meaning that your authority is working on demon spirits that's what it means but what he says is you should rejoice that your name is written uh, you know in in heaven so basically what jesus is saying is you know it's a very deep thing that we should first of all be secure in the identity in christ that you are a child of god and that i am a child of god more than oh i did this ministry i did that it's like that so jesus is telling them jesus is uh, telling like uh, be uh, happy that your name is there more yeah than this correct thing. correct yeah uh, and huh? the, my second question is like yes uh, like we just need uh, like we heal like we drive out demons in the name of jesus right mm. and uh, as uh, from the example what you shared ma'am you told like uh, uh, it took some hours for yeah. you to drive correct. out demons like what you guys did for that whole one hour like mm. how okay good good question so see what we do for that uh, time we will see later there are also um, you know by practical experience people have put down steps okay so there are few things to do like um, uh, i i mean i won't go into the detail but briefly like to identify uh, what kind of a demon is operational then uh, you know if at all they are not fully uh, like like a full time demon possession where you can talk to the person we can talk to the person uh, and if they are involved in some sin or dedication something we have to break that so generally we talk to them we pray with them we break those things first then we go ahead and we command the devil to come out so it sounds very easy but in practicality uh it's challenging because you know the de- demons will try to confuse they will they will they will say like they will not leave so you have to deal with the demon you have to deal with the person so generally <clears throat> it's good to uh, go there and be prayerful so you can have a team of people who are praying with you and one person can do the commanding like you can instruct the devil but in the meantime while this person is there prayer we pray uh, we can sing songs of victory songs about the blood of jesus so what are we doing all this is a declaration to the devil that hey you're already defeated stop doing this you have to come out so we can pray sing declare scriptures talk to the person command the demon so much is there to do so we'll uh, <laughs> we we have to keep on uh... trying clearing uh, the yeah. energies and commanding it over yes. until yes. we see it correct going. correct correct so like you know we are we are co-working with uh the holy spirit 
and sometimes it's not clear cut uh, prince when we are praying i remember once i went with another sister after praying and casting out i thought it's over okay and then we prayed some more and for her she was able to see the demons inside the person and she said no you can't stop there are four more like she could even tell the numbers so many more are still there you know so what what happens is we are working with the holy spirit and he'll keep giving us the discernment okay this is the thing that is there is no formula you have to go person by person situation by situation you know stuff like that so sometimes it takes a while yeah okay so i think we are done for today yes yeah okay last aha uh -huh. interrogation okay no 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 it's it's not like that uh, shawn so it's not interrogation it's more of um, you know just getting useful info uh, for for example see when we <clears throat> sometimes only sometimes every time we cast out a demon there's no need to talk to the demon you know many things where are you from what do you do you don't need to know but sometimes what happens it is helpful because then the demon might reveal that the the path from which it came in like if it says i came in through a sacrifice or i came in through a dedication then it becomes easy for us because oh okay then i should break that you know so basically the intention is this person has to be free so i am looking for clues and with that in mind only sometimes we ask who are you you know where i where, when did you come things like that so not always okay all right so let's let's uh, pray and close then uh, so the person who has a mic <laughs> prince started and prince is closing off in prayer also so yeah let's pray jesus uh, lord we thank you for this time our lord father that you have given thank you for everything that you have uh, taught us our lord father help us lord uh, not to just uh, listen but help us to be the doers of your word our lord father help us uh, to exercise the faith and uh, authority that you have given us our lord father yes, lord. and help yes. us to walk in the victory that you have given us our lord father yes, and jesus. help us our lord father to uh, be your ministers oh lord father to build your mm. kingdom here and uh, to see your kingdom come in every people oh lord father that you have placed in our lives oh lord father you lead us oh lord father with your spirit more and lord give us more understanding more wisdom oh lord father so that we will do your kingdom work oh lord father we submit everything to your hands we give you all the glory and honor in jesus mighty precious name we pray amen 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 and thank you thank you everybody so we wrap up for today thank you everyone online god bless you have a wonderful day and we shall connect next week bye for now